Hello, friends. Where would you prefer to be? Would you like to be here or here? Well, as true blue-blooded orchestral film composers, I hope you chose the second one. When you've managed to score Star Wars Episode 16 or something, then you can buy the first one and relax there all the rest of the time when you're not standing in front of the orchestra. But to stand in front of an orchestra is one of the greatest experiences any composer can enjoy. And unfortunately, it's out of reach to most people. Sort of until now, because what we're going to do for you, we're going to give you the live, live orchestral experience in your own studio. I'm going to give you um, all the multi-track files from um, a short cue I did a few years ago, um, so you can really hear how a live orchestra sounds microphone position by microphone position. And we're going to talk in a minute about how the sampled microphone positions, which you see inside Spitfire and other things, line up with the real thing. OK? Let me show you, first of all, um, what I'm going to be giving you. And if you want to access this, click on the link underneath and uh, you're in business. And then we'll also, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're also going to be including a little micro course about how to mix all this stuff together. So I'll tell you more about that at the end. But anyway, look, first of all, here we are in Logic today. And no, it doesn't mean I'm changing to Logic. It just means that I am being a bit more ambidextrous and being able to use more than one door so I keep everybody happy. So first of all, let's get this. Here are all the stems in this folder here. If you just drag the whole lot on, and we'll line this up with bar five, let it go. Uh, do you want to use existing tracks? No, create new tracks. And convert to our change project. Change project sample rate to 48. Yes, change the project. Because 48K is what the files are at. And it is far better to change the sample rate of the project than to sample rate convert to the files, because they'll sound less great. Well, you, but also, 48K is the industry standard. Right. Let's have a look at this. Do you see these top two here? Uh, or top three? Uh, called tree. Um, this position is very important. These are. Uh, three microphones which sit in an equilateral triangle, normally above and slightly behind um, the conductor. So this is actually the key functional um, mic position. So if we just, uh, first of all, when you get these up, you see you've got tree L, tree C, tree right. So it's obviously tree left, tree center, tree right. Yeah. So what we're going to do is get those three and we're going to group them. There's a group. Group one. Ka bing OK. And now we'll solo them, and I can, so you can hear uh, what they sound like. OK, let's get that going. Let's go from there. Let's try that again with the volume turned up. What you should get is a, from the tree mics is a really nice, well-balanced orchestral sound. It is the sound of the orchestra. Anyway, um, if you look in your, um, uh, if you go into your instrument, here we go. Let's load up uh, uh, some violins or something. Here we go. Um, and you go into here, that, you see here, you've got C, T, and A. It's called different things in different samples, but that means close mics, this means tree, and this means ambient. So what you're listening to, the default mic position in most samples is uh, the tree mics. So this is the sound you're listening to. Next up, the next two down, um, out. They mean outriggers, which tend to be wide mic. They're sometimes called wide. So they go extreme left and extreme right. So if we then take those, pan those left and right. And remember, you're getting, you're getting these, um, all these files, so you can try this at home. And we'll group those together as group two. OK. And these sound like this. Come on, back to the beginning. Oop. <laughs> There, hear the difference? It's a much wider stereo image and it's much, you're getting less detail. So what most people do is they balance these two together. Uh, 
okay? And they balance those two together, plus uh, the last in our, our little series, which is um, these ones, the next two down, which are surround. So let, if we put those two in, again, oh, silly guy, come on, grow up. There you go, left and right, and group them, group three, and we'll solo them so you can hear these. Now, they don't sound that different to the wides. The difference is the surround mics are either right at the back of the hall, beyond the orchestra, or more often than not, actually, the other end. So if you're sitting here, um, the surround mic and the wides are out there, the uh, surround mics are right that way. The reason being that right at the back of the hall often is the percussion, which is all baffled off. So if you have surround mics there, all you're going to hear is, or one of the things you're going to hear, is deafening percussion. So those are all... If we now play with all, all those ones together and see how we get on... OK. So you can balance all three of these together. There's the... Tr oh, hang on. Let's uh, unselect these. Oh, uh, come on. That's it. Right. There's the tree. We're going to bring in the, some wides now. There's no reverb on any of this yet. There's the surrounds. Okay. That is a perfectly good start. So we like that as a good start. Let's unsolo things and then go on to the rest of it. Now, all the rest of them, if you look, are specific close mics. These are spot mics. So we got first violins F, that means the, it's the front of the first violin section. First violins B, the back, obviously, of, this, of, the, of the violin section. And these, you're going to have to pan. So the first violins are there in this particular orchestra. Second violins front and back, they are there. Violas are there front and back. Celli are there. The um, double basses are behind the celli. So when you're panning, um, that's how you need to set it up. The, um, there is an alternative arrangement where you have first violins there, second violins there, and you get a better stereo image, but because if they're playing in octaves, it's better that they're next to each other so they can sort of play ensemble things better, but you get a slightly better stereo image type, a more balanced image if first and seconds are left and right. Um, then beyond that, you have um, French horns. They're over there. Hi, boys. Hi, girls. Um, then we have the woodwind section um, behind the second violins and violas there. And then we have trumpets, trombones, and tuba, known as the heavy brass, which are over there. And finally, we have all... Oh, a harp. Now, harp is a funny one because in a normal concert layout, it, it's sort of over there somewhere. But a lot of the time, because it's so quiet, they stick it somewhere completely different so that they can mic it and you can actually still be heard. And finally, the percussion, who are at the back. So those are all your mic positions and those are the, um, all the tracks which you can have. You can download and do this and put this in your own system and have fun. Uh, and it really is fun. And when you listen to this, you'll get a much better sense of what an orchestra should sound like, how the individual mic positions sound, all that kind of thing. So it is, there's, and as I said, we'll talk about this little micro course in a minute. So when you look at these mic positions in instruments like that, now you see close, it means the spot mics. When you see A for ambient, it's a combination of the wide mics and the surround mics. So you're getting, bringing more of the room in. And the tree mic is that equilateral triangle which sits on top of um, the orchestra. So that's how mic positions line up with real live orchestra. Now, so, if you click the little button and download the, uh, we'll send you a download link for the, um, uh, the, the, the 33 stems, which come in a little zip folder, you just drag the whole lot into your, or import, make sure they all line up, group them and pan them like that, and then you're ready to start. In order to help you through this, um, we've put together a little micro course. It's sort of five short videos. It's taken from our, our premium course, Orchestral Mixing, which was filmed me and the legendary Jake Jackson. I think he's having his name changed by Deedpole to the legendary Jake Jackson. And he's a chief engineer with Spitfire Audio. And so every time you play a Spitfire sound, you're hearing Jake's work because he mixes 
all their stuff. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so we went there for um, a day or two. We took a couple of tracks up to him, and he mixed a, one live orchestral track, one sampled orchestral track, and he went through the whole thing in real detail. And in the premium course, we give you four full-length tracks um, to play around with and mix yourself. Um, but for this little micro course, we gave you a very short cue, but it's the same idea. And all these little bits of video which we're going to be um, sharing with you come from that course. So I hope this is a really good introduction and it will fire your enthusiasm for um, the whole live orchestral thing and uh, give you a real insight into what live orchestra should and can sound like. And that will in turn help your sample mock-ups. And one day, if you're lucky, you too will be standing here. And if you do that really well and score S Star Trek The Darkness Beyond Episode 49, you can too can get so rich you can buy yourself one of these. OK, that's all for the time being. Um, hope you found this useful and enjoyable, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.